Welcome to the Framework and Formula for Writing Meaningful IEPs. This is the second module on quote-unquote disability, and in particular, we're on the first of two lessons under this module. In the first lesson, we're going to be talking about needs versus wants. So in Module 1, we cover IEP-worthy outcomes. In Module 2, this one, we're talking about what's a disability or just a difference. And in particular, we have these two lessons, one that is all about wants versus needs, and the other is about a data-driven decision-making process. So what do we mean by needs versus wants, particularly since in Module 1, in the second lesson, we talked about needs from having this sort of idea of moving through four filters to decide if a need was IEP worthy in terms of writing goals and identifying services. So if that is still a little bit unclear or you haven't made your way to module one, lesson two just yet, you need to kind of sort out the difference between when we talk about the four filters and children's needs and then this broader concept of needs versus wants. And so the image, if you're watching this lesson is about ice cream and there are three scoops of ice cream you can imagine it you can see it maybe some of you are starting to really think mm, I like some ice cream right and so when we think about more broadly needs versus wants it's not even really this idea of what is um, an educational need what's going to allow a student to have access uh, participate and make progress. It's really just understanding that at the core basis of all of our interactions with children is this need to separate out needs versus wants. So let's see if we can figure out how to sort out the two things because this will have implications for our interactions, how we perceive children's behaviors, when we make a referral, when we think something is really about a disability versus a delay or a difference. And so it really becomes necessary that we have this conversation. So again, it might not feel like this is about IEPs, but in order to really understand where IEPs fit into the larger system of outcomes that we may target for young children, we have to understand the difference between needs versus wants. So I'm going to give you six ways to decide that something is actually a need versus a want. And then once it has fallen into that category of need, then we can start to say, wow, I need to intentionally teach this. I need to provide scaffolding and support. Whether that becomes an IEP outcome or how we address and scaffold through IEP services, that's another issue altogether. But I'm going to make the argument that if children are young, they're going to have a whole host of needs. And that's because all humans are born incredibly prematurely. Even those kids who are born at gestational, like, right, perfect, yes, that's exactly when your due date was, as a group of animals, we are very premature and we need lots and lots of love and support in order for us to grow in all areas, particularly within our brains. So if the child is young, that is the first thing for you to say, yep, they're going to have a lot of needs. Whether they are IEP worthy, mm, we have to look at our data, we have to look at our filters, we have to really make some decisions based upon that the child has qualified for services. The second thing we need to really think about, keep using that word need, is what about stressors? Now, this one and the next one, which is are they on the red train, are going to kind of go hand in hand. So for those of you who are familiar with the conversations we've had around Stuart Schenker's work in terms of children being flooded with emotion or being on the red train, you'll kind of see this idea of stressors and the red train kind of going hand in hand, but they're two separate things for the group to consider. So what about stressors? Meaning many times children are tired, are hungry, are confused, are overwhelmed. Their sensory systems are so dysregulated that everything seems loud and unclear and scary. So are children responding in such a way that they look different or they present 
challenges to the adults in their environment, but really it's their bodies responding to a series of stressors. And those can be biological, those can be social, those can be environmental. So we really want to think about what role are stressors playing in a child looking different or experiencing some sort of delay or lag in development and really deciding, hmm, maybe what they need is for us to reduce or address the stressors before we go to worrying about whether or not this child has an actual disability. That also means, are they on the red train at the time that we're making some decisions? The red train refers to this period of time where children sort of revert back to or go to their brainstem or what Dan Siegel refers to as the basement brain. This is where kids can't make good conscious choice. They can't problem solve. They may even have trouble with recall. So children may look like they have a delay or a disability, but really this difference that they're presenting is because they're on the red train and they may spend a lot of time on the red train. They may even prefer being on the red train. Now, not meaning a conscious preference, it just means that their body has habituated to that and it will do things to get it back to that state, even though it's obnoxious or challenging or discomforting in other ways. So if children are on the red train or on the red train often, I'm going to argue that they have a lot of needs and the behaviors we're seeing is not just them wanting more ice cream, right? It's really about them needing us to deliver instruction and scaffolding. Sometimes we need to think about are there other possible solutions? And this might again sound like we've covered it in terms of like, well, I've thought about the stressors and I've thought about if the child's on the red train and flooded with emotion. But we just need to really think about all of the demands that we're putting on a child. What are all the expectations and are those realistic? Do the adults in the environment have a clear understanding of early development? Do we know what comes before? Or have we sort of gotten sucked into the kindergarten readiness push and that we're now setting expectations that are no longer really an, um, what should be what any child should be doing, let alone one that we may be worrying about in terms of their development. So we also again can think back to things like, are they hungry? Are they tired? Are they anxious? Are they confused? So again, it may not be that they're so flooded that they are in their basement brain, but there might be some other things. They had to make a lot of transitions. They have some disruptions in their life right now, so it's some temporary um, stressors. And again, that means that the behaviors that we see are asking for us to see their them, see their actions as something that they need for us to give love, support, connection, instruction versus, oh, they just want my attention. They want their way. They want to have everything that they desire, right? That's the ice cream. If you want three scoops of ice cream, that's really different than do you need. And so when there are these other possible factors, we start to go, hmm, maybe this is a need, not first, uh, the, this is a need versus not a want. So has instruction been provided? The idea here is not to get caught up in delaying a referral. The idea here is not to say, well, we're not really sure if it's a disability because the child is young and hasn't been exposed to certain things. This is really, though, thinking about has instruction been delivered, even if that means just a consistent and responsive um, caregiver that has modeled the outcome that we desire. So if a child seems like they have really challenging behaviors or a child really seems to struggle with even something like fine motor, it's not just that they haven't had a chance to be exposed to it as we would think of like, oh, I gave you the scissors or I didn't give you the scissors. The idea is have other loving adults in a responsive way, in a predictable way, in a supportive way, encourage the child to use their hands at or near midline? Have they encouraged them to um, manipulate objects and gain fine motor strength? So it's not just about whether you've had scissors and are the scissors dangerous at your age or not, but just have you seen other people do things with their hands? Have you been encouraged to use your hands to explore the environment? That's what we mean by instruction. The last 
consideration as you're thinking about, is this a disability or delayed disorder? And again, you could be asking that question before you get to the IEP meeting, certainly because you're asking that for around eligibility. But even when you get to an IEP, people sort of bring all the needs with them and they have this big long list and they worry that if they don't write a goal for every need, they'll be out of compliance. And so that gets a little bit wonky, but it's really about those filtered needs then require the team to address goals and services and or just services. So when we think about needs holistically that may have arisen during an evaluation or as part of our you know, gathering of information, we have to be careful that we don't just see everything as a need. And that gets at this last part, which is what are your own triggers? Like you might worry that a child walks on their tiptoes or they tend to still be drinking out of a sippy cup and you think that they should be drinking um, just from a regular cup. Or maybe you would expect a longer length of utterance or uh, more um, self-regulation and impulse control. So there might be things that are your triggers that aren't even the big ones like a child acting out or acting aggressively or um, refusing all the time, right? Their triggers could come in, things that you think are important milestones for children to have accomplished and they haven't yet. So when you think about your triggers, we sometimes call this, do you hear shark music? So when I know therapists that if they see a child sitting in a W sit, they worry, oh, get them out of the W. And some of us are like, what? What's a W sit, right? So it's this idea that we all have different triggers when we get nervous or anxious or we think that a child needs something. We might also have different perceptions of how children should behave and we might interpret it as misbehavior or we might worry that we're reinforcing some sort of bad behavior by letting a child get their way because we really see this something as a want, not as a need. So really taking some time to self-reflect and know what your triggers are can help you understand if you're perceiving a child's actions as a want when it's really a need. So this lesson, which is under this bigger umbrella of really understanding what is a disability, a delay, or just a difference, is kind of broadening the conversation between needs and wants. Certainly, we can go back to Module 1, Lesson 2, and understand which needs are IEP worthy, which ones we should write goals and address through services, but we need to have this bigger perception or this bigger conversation. Do I see what the child's doing as something that they want and maybe have conscious control over versus something that they need for me to slow down, provide instruction, and give scaffolding? In lesson two of this module, We'll go even deeper in terms of this notion of disability, delay, or difference, and we'll really think to um, how do we use a data-driven decision-making model to help us make the distinctions between when it's a disability versus just a difference. And again, this might seem like we should have done this before the IEP even took place, Yes, certainly, but sometimes we can bring lots and lots of data forward to an IEP meeting and we need to figure out what's really relevant for the conversation around an IEP versus just high quality instruction versus just this is how the child is and their temperament and we have to understand our own triggers around those differences.